Hello. It's good to see you. Today, I'm going to read to you a short story that I wrote just this week based on a picture I saw on Facebook. I follow this group on Facebook. It's called something like um, Weird Secondhand Finds. Whenever somebody finds something strange or interesting in a thrift store somewhere, they post a picture of it and tell them anything they know about it. Well, somebody posted this picture of a little pink, like a little porcelain bunny rabbit. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, I have to write a story about that rabbit. That almost never happens to me. I never get just instant inspiration like that. Well, it's rare. But I thought, I have to write a short story about this little rabbit. It, I didn't find it creepy at all. I found it very intriguing. I don't know, there was just something about it. I thought, I have to write a little story about that rabbit. And I didn't have anything in mind, um, I, but I saved the picture and I sat down with this, I had this notebook nearby, it has a Dalek on it. So I had this, I had this little notebook sitting nearby and I just sat down and I just, I just started writing. I didn't really, I didn't really know where it was going to go. I, I didn't, I didn't have any idea. This all just kind of came to me and a couple of other characters were added and um, I found something online that was similar. I tried to find pictures that were close to what I saw in my mind. It's kind of like, you know, I wrote a book, River Road, and I, I really just, in my mind, I kind of see what happens. And I'm just writing down everything I see in here. And that's kind of what I did with this story. I didn't know how long it was going to be or what was going to happen. So it's kind of, a, it's sort of a scary concept for some reason. It's kind of a scary process for some reason. There's something kind of daunting about it, but it's also a lot of fun and very exciting. Um, but before I get into that, I wanted to share a little, a little note with you very quickly. This was attached on the outside of the package I got from Miss Emily in Texas, and I missed it. I didn't realize that there was an envelope taped to the outside of the box with that card in it. So before I, I read you my story, I want to read you this card quickly. So this is from Miss Emily. And, you know, she sent me all those yummy, awesome things from Texas. The card says, Hello, Mary. After I taped up this box, I realized I hadn't put a note in it for you. I finished packing and taping it on Christmas Eve and was just about done with wrapping and was just about done with wrapping anything. Everything in this box is from Texas, except for the VW stickers and notebook. The baking mixes are a bit special because they were made by Morrison's Milling in my hometown, Denton, Texas. The mill was one of, and still is, the tallest building in town. Only the dorms of Texas Women's University are taller. There is, slash was, a huge sign on top of the mill that flashed biscuits, corn kits, mexi kits, pan kits, into our small town sky. That sign was a beacon to me as a kid, the only flashy thing in town. Sounds a lot like Denton, North Carolina. <laughs> Denton has grown a lot since then, but Morrison's sign is still a symbol for me. I've moved away and, pro and will probably never go back, but I still love that town. Anyway, I hope you like these things. And I put in two of each because I knew how I know how much two boys can eat. <laughs> My wrapping isn't fancy, but I hope you enjoy the goodies in this box. And I did very much, Miss Emily. Thank you. And then there's also a little a little card, a little index card. It says, I couldn't fit everything I wanted to say on one little greeting card, but want to tell you how much you make me, my 13-year-old daughter, and even sometimes my husband laugh every single night. Thank you for what you do. Well, you are very welcome, and I thank you for all your gifts and that nice card. Thank you. Okay. So now again, as a reminder for this story, here is a picture of the, the little bunny rabbit that inspired it. I don't have any pictures or illustrations. You just have to kind of imagine it in your mind, but I will periodically put up a picture of the characters to give you a little reminder of how they looked in my mind, because there are two more. 
um, that I found pictures that are close to what I imagine they look like, what, how they look to me. Okay, the name of this story, and I gave it a name after I finished the story. When I started, I didn't know what it was going to be called. <laughs> the title of the story is The Fiddler's New Home. The purple light of evening slowly faded, and a cool breeze ruffled the curtains in the bedroom with just enough chill to prompt the little girl to close the window. She pushed her footstool over to the sill, grunting at the weight, then reached up and pulled the window down. The lock sat open. She moved the stool back over to the bed, then used it to climb up, feeling the pillowy softness of the down comforter under her knees. Light bled under the door, and she knew there was no need to wait up for a tucking in or a goodnight kiss. Those days were over. Her mother was gone. Relatives and friends streamed in and out in the days prior to console her father with whispered words and quick glances over shoulders at the poor child. Loss affects so many people in odd ways. Everyone agreed that the little girl was pitiful and the situation was tragic, but sorrow, like a force field, seemed to keep everyone from touching her or even speaking to say hello or I'm sorry. Strange, the girl thought, how they're here and alive, but not for me. Her father shooed her off to bed after dinner with only a few words and a pat on the head. Now, alone in her room, she quietly, carefully pulled a white kerchief out from under her pillow. She looked around in the dark, afraid of a consequence, because she stole that kerchief. At the viewing, she touched the coffin softly, ran her hand up over the side, and felt the kerchief nestled down in the crook of her mother's right arm. No one was looking. Without thinking, she snatched it out and stuffed it in her pocket. The wind gusted suddenly outside. A tree branch scraped against her window with a long, slow creep sound. Oh, how she hated that tree branch. Darkness swallowed everything. The room, the bed, the stool, the little girl. Wind howled and she buried her face in the handkerchief, inhaling the sweet, fading scent of her mother's favorite perfume. And soon she slept, uncovered, cold, and brokenhearted. On her nearby dresser, a little nose twitched, a little foot thumped once, softly, then again. Little eyes moved to search the darkness for signs that the girl was asleep. Several minutes passed. Again, thump, thump. The small pink rabbit crept forward. Just as its right foot moved upward, the bedroom door opened a crack. A beam of light spilled into the room and across the little girl. The rabbit froze with its foot in the air, waiting to see what would happen next. See, she's already asleep, her father whispered. Let's leave her be. It's been a hard day for all of us. The door opened wider, and a woman tiptoed into the room. Wide-eyed, the rabbit watched her approach. I'll just leave this here, she whispered. Just tell her it was from me. She placed a figurine on the dresser next to the rabbit, and the two left the room, closing the door behind them. The rabbit slowly lowered its foot, afraid to turn around. Something jabbed the rabbit's back, causing her to jump and let out a little yip. Where am I? She heard a voice say. You're in my girl's room, the rabbit said. We have to be quiet. Why? Because... The rabbit heard the plucking of violin strings, loud and jarring. Stop, she whispered. No, I'm a fiddler, and a fiddler plays loud. The rabbit bounded forward and desperately fumbled with the switch on a tiny lamp nearby. She turned it on, then looked to see who this creature was. Facing her was a little porcelain boy, not six inches high, standing upright with a fiddle under his chin. The bow rested in his hand, ready to play a tune. You can't, the rabbit said, pointing at the sleeping girl. Look! 
The boy saw the little girl for the first time. Oh my, he said. Do, do I belong to her now? I suppose you do, the rabbit said. The boy looked the rabbit up and down, wide-eyed. What happened to you? Your body? It's all broken up. He looked at himself. I'm so smooth. How do you stay together? It's only on my surface, the rabbit said. My girl likes to leave the curtains open during the day to let in the sunshine. But she brushed a paw over her back. Over time, the heat from the sunshine damaged me. Now I look broken, but I'm really not. She looked over at the girl and smiled, her cheeks uneven. As long as she can play in the sunlight, the rabbit's voice trailed off. What's your name? The fiddler asked. My name's Molly, the rabbit said, but my girl calls me Crackles. Crackles, the fiddler said. Doesn't it hurt when she calls you that? She's making fun of you. Oh no, she said. I was called Molly for a long time, and she loved me then. Now she calls me Crackles, and she smiles the most beautiful smile when she says it. It's like heaven when she notices me. She likes to rub her fingers over the cracks, and she pretends to tickle me. <laughs> her laugh. Oh, how I love to hear her laugh. She's everything to me. Everything. The little girl turned over, not waking up but still clutching her mother's handkerchief. What's your name, Crackles asked the boy. I'm a Hummel, he said. What's a Hummel? Is that like a bunny? I don't think so. Do you have a name? The boy thought for a moment, then said, Nobody's ever asked me that. You can call me the Fiddler. Okay, Fiddler, Crackles said, then stopped her face frozen in thought. We have an important job here. We look out for our girl. That's why we were placed here. Is it? The fiddler asked. How do you know? Crackles cocked her head to the side and scratched her ear, her little foot going thump, 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 lightly on the surface of the dresser a few times. What other reason could there be? She asked. The fiddler shrugged his shoulders, then raised the fiddle back up under his chin. No, Crackle said. It's too loud. My girl only likes it when I sing softly. You're playing. It's just too much. You can't do that. He sighed and lowered the fiddle, waving the bow back and forth. What am I supposed to do then? This is all I know. A fiddler fiddles loudly. Excuse me. The fiddler was startled by the little voice down at his feet. He looked down and saw a green ceramic turtle. Ah, who are you? She calls me Starla, the turtle said. We play together in the bathtub and down by the creek. When it rains, sometimes we go splash around in the mud puddles too. You and the girl? Our girl, Starla said. Crackles is right. We all take care of her, and you can too. You just have to figure out how. But how can you do anything? The fiddler asked. You're so small, and you have a face like a lemon. That's all you see, Starla said. But our girl? She sees a fun playmate who just needs a little cheering up. When she holds me, I can swim so fast your head would spin. Sometimes she holds me up as we run back to the house from the creek, and I can even fly. Crackles looked toward the window and laughed softly. I love watching them play outside, she said. Having these curtains open may have damaged the outside of me a little, but the joy it brings, she sighed. The three fell silent, listening to the girl's soft, slow breaths. I don't know how to help her, the fiddler said, very sadly. Something has happened, hasn't it? I felt it as soon as I was brought into this house. It's the same feeling as the last place I lived, before the antique shop. I lived in a curio cabinet with others like me, and for years I was dusted every Tuesday by an elderly lady. I look forward to Tuesdays. It wasn't much, but it was all I ever had. She'd pick me up and tickle me with her feather duster. She even called me handsome once. But then one Tuesday, 
She never came. I waited and waited. The sun went down, and all of us were there in the dark, alone. She was gone. Just gone. The sadness I feel here is the same as it was in that house. Crackles brushed her front paw against his arm. I am so sorry. We all wondered what happened to our friend, the fiddler continued. The next time we were visited, it was by a very nervous little man. He didn't say anything about how handsome I looked or how he loved my face. He just wrapped us all up and talked about antique shops and tidy sums. That ended my days in the cabinet with my friends and the visitor that we all loved. This will be better, said Starla. Our girl will do more than dust you. You may get to go on adventures like me or get tickled and hugged like Crackles. You're going to... Crackles thumped her back foot gently. That's enough now, she said. You know things have changed. Remember? We discussed it last night. Starla lowered her head. Right. Fiddler, things may be a little quiet for a while. Our girl has been gone a lot. Her father takes her on trips to a hospital. Sometimes they were gone all day, two days even. But then earlier this week, the visits stopped. Our girl, she spends a lot of time in here with us now, but she doesn't want to play. She takes her baths alone. She doesn't go down to the creek. Crackles looked over at the fiddler. We all have a job here, but sometimes our jobs change for a little while. Sometimes we're a playmate, and sometimes we're a comforting familiarity on the dresser. Both jobs are just as important. Will she ever hold me and tell me I'm handsome? The fiddler asked. Starla started to answer, but Crackles spoke first. She sure will. How could she not? Look at you. I haven't seen myself since I lived in the curio, the fiddler said. It had glass in the back panel. Starla nudged a little compact over to him. Open it up. The fiddler set down his violin and bow and opened up the mirror. He admired himself in the faint glow of the little lamp. Oh my, he said. My hat. He slowly ran his fingers along the brim of his hat. Has it faded? We wouldn't know, and neither will she, Starla said, nodding at the girl. Crackles hopped over to the window and pushed the lock shut. She then jumped down to the floor from the dresser, landing softly on a pair of slippers. With great effort, she pushed the footstool over to the dresser and motioned for Starla and the fiddler to jump down onto the stool, which they did. What are we doing? the fiddler asked. Stay on the stool with me, Starla told him. This is one of Crackles' jobs. You can hold on to me if you need me. The stool suddenly jerked forward as Crackles pushed and the fiddler clutched Starla's shell to steady himself. After pushing the stool up against the bed, Crackles leapt up onto the stool to join her friends. Over the past few weeks, she whispered to the fiddler, this has become part of our job. Starla crawled to the edge of the stool next to the bed and shrunk into her shell. Crackles stood on the shell and hefted the fiddler up onto the bed. Then she lifted Starla up high enough for the fiddler to grab her, then in one big bound jumped up herself. See, Starla whispered, you're already doing a good job. It's so much easier to get up here with you to help. Really? he asked, looking back and forth between his two new friends. Crackles nodded. Absolutely, she whispered. I'm really glad you're here. You don't always have to see a clear path. Sometimes the best thing to do is sit out and get going. The three slowly approached the sleeping girl. Working together, they tucked her in under the covers, being careful to keep her mother's handkerchief in her grasp. If she were to wake up, they knew it would be the first thing she reached for. After getting her snuggled down in the covers and her head resting on the pillow, the fiddler looked at Crackles. Is that our job? Crackles smiled. It's our pleasure. She used the corner of the sheet to lightly stroke the little girl's cheek. She needs us and we need her. That's what life is all about. 
The wind had finally died down outside. Crackle sat on her haunches on the pillow with Starla right beside her. They began to softly sing together in harmony. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. The fiddler, as if on cue, lifted the violin up under his chin. He gave Crackles a wink and a nod. Crackles winced, half expecting a loud, raucous tune to shatter the peace, but instead she heard a soft, lovely tune to accompany their harmony. The trio continued, You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. As the music faded, the little girl, eyes still closed, smiled softly in her sleep. The three remained near her all through the night, only returning to their places on the dresser just before sunrise. Rest easy, Crackle said to the fiddler, turning off the lamp. We have hard, sad days ahead. We'll see sadness and grief, and we'll have work to do. But trust me when I say, you finally found your home. That is the end of my short story, The Fiddler's New Home. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed my little short story. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon.